Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Tutorial. Today we are going to discuss about uh, the introductory parts of the communication process or some of the basic concepts or introductory concepts related to the process of communication. So let's get started. Now let's start with the basic definition of communication. Now what is communication? In simple words, communication means exchange of messages, information between two or more people. But that's a layman definition. From an engineering point of view, Communication is the mechanism of sending, processing and receiving data or information by electrical means. The mode of transfer of data or information has to be electrical through a voltage or current signal. That is what electrical communication means. Now, <clears throat> this is the block diagram of a basic electronic communication system. Now, as you see here, this is the input message and there are various blocks which are involved in the communication process. The input transducer, transmitter, channel, noise and distortion signals, the receiver, the output transducer and the output message. We are going to discuss each of these blocks one by one in detail. So we are going to discuss here the components or the blocks involved in the communication system. First of all is the source. Now the source is the originator of the data or the message. It generates the data or message or information which is to be transferred. Now this message can be audio, video or image signal. For example, human voice when we speak we create an audio signal. Now, input transducer. Now, we cannot send our voice over long distances for a communication between two persons which are in close proximity with each other. It's fine. We can speak, the other person can listen. But what if the distance between the two persons is large, let's say 500 meters, 1 kilometer, 3 kilometers, 100 kilometers. In that case, we cannot, human physical voice signal alone cannot serve the purpose. Here we have to take help of electrical equipment so that we can send our voice signal over long distances. Here comes the input transducer. Now we know the electrical equipment or apparatus respond only to electrical signals. They can understand only electrical signals. For that purpose, we need to convert our voice signal, which is physical or non-electrical in nature, into electrical form. The input transducer serves this purpose. It converts the non-electrical signal into electrical form. Example of an input transducer is the microphone into which we speak while in an auditorium or uh, in a radio station. What this microphone does is that it converts the human voice into electrical voltage or current signal. So this is an example of an input transducer. Next is the transmitter. As we have here, 
the transmitter block so a transmitter is a combination of three elements the modulator the amplifier and the transmitting antenna now <clears throat> In order to send our voice signal over long distances, we need to take help of another signal. Our voice signal alone cannot cover long distance because of its low intensity or energy level. So we require a high intensity or high energy value signal. It's just like hitching a ride, taking a bus to cover long distances. The uh, high intensity signal acts as the vehicle and the low intensity voice signal or our message signal acts as the passenger of the vehicle. So what the modulator does is that it alters or changes one of the characteristics or parameters of the high intensity signal such as the amplitude, frequency or phase in accordance to that of the message signal or the uh, signal which has to be transferred. So this is called as, the process is called as modulation and the device which achieves that is called as the modulator. Now, in order for the signal, modulated signal to cover long distances, it has to have sufficient energy, sufficient intensity. Now, what the amplifier does is that it increases or enhances the energy level or intensity of the modulated signal so that it can cover long distances in the order of thousands and thousands of kilometers. Now the antenna converts the electrical signal into electromagnetic waves. We all know that electromagnetic waves can cover long distances as compared to the electrical signals. The antenna serves that purpose. Next comes the channel. <clears throat> Now the channel is the medium of propagation of the message or the information which is transferred between two parties. Now when there is a conversation taking place between two people in a room, the channel is atmosphere or air. The air molecules carry the message or the signal. When there is a conversation between two persons over a telephone or mobile telephone the channel is the coaxial or cables or copper cables or optical fibers which are connected now when two persons communicate over a mobile phone the radio frequency waves the atmosphere or the we know that uh, the ionosphere is used for communication between uh, as it acts as the channel or the mode of communication between the two persons. So there are various um, modes of uh, medium of communication for example air as I said earlier, copper cables or coaxial cables or optical fibers. In case of uh, telephonic conversation or internet communication messaging, all that, it, it is done through that channel. So, next is the receiver. As the transmitter sends the message signal through proper modulation, amplification and uh, conversion into electromagnetic waves, the there has to be a receiver which catches the transmitted signal. So the receiver also is a combination of three elements. 
receiving antenna, a demodulator, amplifier and a filter. Now what the receiving antenna does is that it converts the electromagnetic waves which are transmitted into normal electrical signals. Then that electrical signal is fed to the demodulator and amplifier combination. The demodulator extracts the original message signal from the modulated carrier signal. It's just like the as I said, the passenger taking a ride at the demodulator, the passenger comes out of the vehicle. Similarly, the message signal comes out of or is extracted from the carrier signal. After covering long distances, surely the intensity and the energy level of the signal will be less. The amplifier at the receiver side increases the strength and intensity of the received um, signal, received uh, signal whatever it is audio or video. Now as the signal travels from uh, the input side to the output side, certain noise and distortion elements get added to the channel which deteriorate or degrade the quality of the signal. So the filter which can be a low pass, high pass, band pass filter, generally low pass and band pass are used. They are used to remove the unwanted noise, interference and distorting signals from the original message signal. The filter does that and thus improves the signal to noise ratio and uh, the efficiency of the communication. Now next comes the output transducer. As we had a input transducer at the input side, the at the output side there is an output transducer. Now the message which was originally transmitted was a physical one the voice signal or the speech, the human voice. Now we need to get that signal. We do not want an electrical signal. What can we understand? What can a layman understand from an electrical uh, waveform? Nothing. So he or she needs that original voice signal so that he can understand the message. So what the output transducer does is that it converts the electrical modulated signal into the original physical or voice signal. Example of that is the loudspeaker. We, uh, we have loudspeakers in uh, various uh, functions in auditoriums. It converts the electrical signal which is uh, processed, modulated, amplified into the original speech or voice signal so that we can easily comprehend the message, comprehend and understand the message. So these are the basic elements of communication covered. Next are the basic modes of communication. There are basically two modes of communication. First is uh, the broadcasting which involves a single powerful transmitter which transmits signals and numerous small receivers receiving that signal. It is one to many. It is one to many form or mode of communication. Next is the point to point communication. It involves communication between a single transmitter and a single receiver. It is one to one communication. So here I have discussed with you some of the introductory basic concepts related to the communication process starting from the basic definition of communication, the basic blocks or elements of a communication system and we have discussed each of them in detail and the basic modes of communication. So I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical and electronics engineering and uh, have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you.